Okay, indicative is the dominant Greek mood. There are four others you will learn about in due course. What is mood? It is one of the components of a Greek verb. Mood is not whether you are happy or sad. It has to do with the relation of the verb to reality. The indicative mood indicates reality. So indicative verbs indicate actions that have already happened, are happening, or will happen. In addition to a verb being in a particular mood, Greek verbs have other components. They have tense, voice, mood, person, and number, in addition to, of course, their lexical form. Greek has six tenses, present, imperfect, future, aorist, perfect, and pluperfect. Greek has three voices, active, middle, and passive. Greek has three persons, first, second, and third. And you already know Greek has two numbers, singular and plural. The textbook will explain the different nuances of the Greek tenses and the three voices. This video will focus on how they are formed. A Greek verb contains all of these components. The formation of these verbs is initially learned best with what I call the indicative slot machine. We'll start at slot 3 because every word begins with its stem. In this case, working with trusty Luo, our stem is Lu. Slot 1 is the augment. This is an epsilon added to the front of a word. Some tense and voice combinations have an epsilon, some don't. Slot 2 is reduplication. Reduplication takes the consonant that begins the stem and duplicates it with an epsilon. Some tense and voice combinations have reduplication, some don't. Slot 4 is a suffix added after the stem. There are six different possible suffixes that can be added. Each of them identify particular tense and voice combinations. Slot 5 is a connecting vowel, also called a thematic vowel. Some tense and voice combinations have the connecting vowel, some don't. Finally, slot 6 contains our inflected endings. There are two sets of endings, primary and secondary, and both sets have endings for active voice and another set for middle or passive voice. The inflected endings indicate person and number of a verb and help to identify voice as well. Here's the key. Particular combinations of the slots in the slot machine form verbs in all their various combinations. We'll look at this in more detail in a few minutes. First, let's start with what goes on the end of verbs, primary and secondary endings. Verb endings indicate the person and number of verbs, and can also help identify the voice of verbs too. Notice in the primary active endings how they are presented with the connecting vowel plus inflection forming what I call the final ending. This is done because the connecting vowel, slot 5, interacts with the inflection. So primary active endings in their final form are o, ace, a, omen, eta, usi. There is also a second set of primary active endings labeled as me verbs that you should become familiar with now, but me verbs will be discussed in a later video. The me verb endings are me, sigma, si, men, te, asi. Primary middle passive endings are my, si, or a, tai, metha, sthe, ntai. Secondary active endings are nu, sigma, nothing, and the nothing can end up looking like n because of a movable nu which is often added to the end of the word. Men, te, and then nu, son, or si. Secondary middle passive endings are main, u or sa, ta, metha, sthe, nta. I'll mention later in the video a way to help you memorize these. Now that you've seen the endings, let's go to a detailed view of the slot machine. Slot 1, the epsilon augment. Slot 2, the duplication. Slot 3, the verb stem. Slot 4, the suffix. Slot 5, the connecting vowel. Slot 6, verb endings. Please notice the leftmost side of this table, called principal parts. This will become a regular part of our discussions when we talk about verbs, but I don't want to bog you down with that now. Just know that principal parts refers to the six possible spelling variations for every Greek verb. So, as you see, only imperfects, aorists, and pluperfects have slot 1, the augment, attached to the beginning of the word. And you should know by now that if a verb begins with a vowel, 
this epsilon will contract with it. We don't have this problem with trusty Lua. Slot 2, reduplication, is only used by perfect and pluperfect. Reduplication takes the first letter of the stem and duplicates it with an epsilon. Every verb obviously has slot 3, the verb stem, which holds the meaning of the verb. Numerous tenses also have a suffix in slot 4. Future active and middle have a sigma. Aorist active and middle have sigma alpha. Perfect active has kappa alpha. Pluperfect active has kappa epsilon iota. Aorist passive has theta eta. And future passive has theta eta sigma. Looking at these suffixes, hopefully you recognize some of our problem consonants, particularly the sinister sigma and the two copycats, kappa and theta. If the stem of a particular verb is a liquid letter, sigmas will drop off. If a verb stem ends in a stop consonant, we will have consonant interactions in all of these suffixes. Again, with trusty luo, we won't see these problems. Slot 5 is the connecting vowel, which occurs in numerous tense and voice combinations. This too can cause issues because of vowel contraction. So if the stem of a verb ends in a vowel, and a connecting vowel is added, we will see vowel contraction. Please keep in mind that as we talk about the indicative slot machine, we are talking about what we call the strong verb, i.e. verbs, like Luo, that follow the rules. I have already mentioned some issues that you will be introduced to later, such as vowel contraction due to slot 1 or slot 5, as well as consonant interaction because of slot 4. There are also verbs that don't follow the slot machine at all, and we'll talk about them later. Now let's look at a few examples to help us understand formation better. What would an imperfect, active, indicative, second person singular form of Luo look like? Looking at our slot machine table, we see that the tense voice combination of imperfect active would build onto the stem by taking an augment, a connecting vowel, and secondary active endings. Looking at our endings table, the second person singular inflection for secondary active endings is a sigma. So the slot machine would look like this, with the final result looking like this. What would an aorist passive indicative third person plural form of Luo look like? Looking again at our slot machine table, we see the aorist passive would build off of the stem by taking the augment, the theta eta suffix, and the secondary active endings. Looking to our endings table, we see that the third plural secondary active endings has three options. In this case, it is son. So the slot machine would look like this, with the final result looking like this. Finally, what would a perfect middle passive indicative second person plural form of Luo look like? Looking at the slot machine table, we see that it would build onto the stem by taking reduplication and the primary middle passive ending. Looking to our endings table, we see that the second person plural of the primary middle passive endings is sthe. So the slot machine would look like this, with the final result looking like this. To continue working on your understanding of indicative verb formation, I would encourage you to test yourself on how you would make different forms of Luo and check your answers against the Luo paradigm found in the textbook. How do you make a present active indicative first person plural of Luo? How do you make a future middle indicative second person singular of Luo? How would you make a pluperfect active indicative third person singular of Luo? What about an aorist active indicative, third person plural of Luo? And finally, what about a present middle passive indicative, first person singular of Luo? And you can go on and on. I highly encourage you to memorize the indicative slot machine, as well as the primary and secondary endings. But don't forget, this is about formation. In the stripped down approach, you aren't worrying about parsing on site and replicating tables from memory. Tooting my own horn again, I would encourage you to sing along to and memorize the various verb songs found in my singing grammarian package, available as a digital download through Kriegel Academic. This will help familiarize you and even help you to memorize the slot machine and verb endings. 
Finally, don't get too bogged down in the formation of verbs, because how a Greek verb is formed is not in the end exegetically significant. Understanding the different nuances of the different tenses, voices, and moods are key in this regard, and will be discussed in the textbook. You can find me on the web at ntgreekresources.com, which includes my blog and Twitter feed, and of course numerous resources to help you learn Greek, including apps, songs, videos, software training, and more.